first episode of the podcast. I don't know why we're doing this, but we're doing it. Uh, because people are going to like it. They're going to enjoy it. Even though everybody else has better stuff to talk about. Um, <laughs> you got to try it. You got to try it all. Yeah. Hit them from all we're angles. Doing it. Dude, we're doing it. So. All right. So, oh, okay. We don't have Taylor Swift on our side, but maybe <laughs> she'll shout us out to help get us some more <clears throat> viewers. No, she's not. No. <laughs> okay. No. All right. So this is the first segment. We're going to talk about the housing market, and it's really kind of about how the housing market is a little bit at a standstill. Yeah. It kind of depends where you, the property is. Uh, so this article came out. When did this come out? Today at 221 Eastern Time, so earlier this morning. Uh, so I think I'm going to read it off, and then we can kind of see how accurate it is to the local market. Okay. All right, I'm gonna summarize it. Home prices show no signs of falling, even though mortgage rates inch towards 8% and buyers flee. What gives? Home prices show no signs of falling, even though mortgage rates inch towards 8%. When, when will it become more affordable to buy a home? This is the key question of the housing market right now. Um, all right, so how accurate is that? It's definitely accurate. Um... I think the biggest thing is like, well, how, how is that possible? If buyers are fleeing, how are prices not dropping? Yeah. And it all comes down to inventory. I think there's only around 600,000 homes actively on the market right now. And I know like in 2008, before the crash, I believe there was over 4 million. So inventory is the issue. But buyers are fleeing or not necessarily fleeing, but more just kind of staying on the sidelines. I don't think they're fleeing the market. I don't think they're, they're just waiting. Um, Interest rates are averaging over 7.7%. Yeah, nearing the 8% range. I mean, that's, that's I don't think huge. anybody thought that that was going to happen. And rate, rates have increased faster than they've ever increased in history. Yeah. Um, but there's also less inventory than there's almost ever been in history, too. So you combine those two things and you get where the market is right now. Some houses are sitting. Some sellers are having to lower their prices um, or offer credit incentives. But I mean, it's not like there's a crash in any any way, shape or form. Yeah, so. I would agree. Um, okay, they go on to say, uh, higher rates erode a home buyer's budget. A uh, prospective buyer with a monthly budget of 3,000 could purchase 595 k home at start of 2022. Today, they can only afford 419. And that's yeah, that's definitely accurate. That's what buyers. I mean, we we had a buyer get pre-approved today, and they were like, "Oh my goodness, that payment is is a lot bigger than they thought." They got pre-approved maybe a year ago. Kind of paused the search, and the same, you know, you get pre-approved the same number. The payment is much much higher. So it's kind of it's a shock. That's yeah. why we talk about the temporary rate buy downs, right? Try to bring those interest rates down. Right. But, um, I know that we heard the other day that the two the t main two reasons buyers are not entering the market right now number one interest rates are too high affordability affordability number two they're still up against multiple offers right so it's like well okay think about it you have high interest rates so people are not wanting to make offers but then you still have multiple offers so that just shows you how strong the market is and and when rates do come down even a quarter percent half percent full percent there's gonna be such an influx of buyers and prices will go up yeah, I mean, early 2022, what would you say interest rates were at? Early, early 2022? Yeah, I think they were at like five and a half. Five and a half, six. Five, probably, early 2022, yeah. Definitely with the five or six. Five or six. It. So, I mean, they've gone up almost 2% and your affordability just goes down over $100,000. So, But while demand is while still demand there and there's and no... Home are not dropping over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars right now and that's now. inventory yeah no it's that's inventory. it's an interesting time um having said all that it seems doom and gloom there are opportunities for buyers though because not every property is getting multiple offers some properties are sitting sellers are having to drop their prices a little bit offer concessions credits towards closing costs temporary rate buy downs um so you know there are opportunities out there for buyers if they do find something every buyer is a little different it's, you know, some buyers, it's still a good time to buy. Some buyers, it's not. So you just have, you know, you have to talk to your, your lender partner, your agent, talk to us. We'd love to help you to see if it's a good time for you to buy or not, you know, today. Yes. Nobody can predict what's going to happen though, right? I mean, 
what where will rates be next month or i mean will they be higher they'll be lower no one does no one knows no one knows you know? they're saying at least a quarter percent before they stabilize higher a, a, a quarter percent higher before they okay. stabilize again yeah um yeah because the fed came out they said well wait we, we're not going to raise it yet but we might raise Yes. But keep in mind, those when the Fed's changing those rates or adjusting rates, those are short term rates. Those are not necessarily mortgage rates, but they do have some effect on mortgage rates. Right. right? But it's not the end all be all. Right. So high, high interest rates, high home prices uh, with demand still, you know, pretty high. It's, we're considered an abnormal market housing market right now. Okay, the last time we had abnormal housing markets was 1970 and early 1980s, where mortgage rates pushed up to 18%. Oh, boy. That would be, uh, that would not be good. What's interesting, too. So, and inflation is not helping either, yeah. right? Cost, yeah. of, yeah. cost of everything going Well, and what's interesting, too, is like the number of pending home sales is at the lowest level it's been since, I believe, April of 2020, which is right when the pandemic started, the shutdown, owner-occupied homes couldn't even be shown. They had to be bought sight unseen. So to compare this time, I mean, that just shows you how much interest rates do impact the market. It's as slow as it was when there was a global pandemic. But then remember, then things just took off. Yeah. So this is a temporary phase. It's not permanent. It's just how temp, you know, how, how long is it going to take? They're thinking rates will come down in the next six to 12 months. So fingers crossed. That's what we're hoping. Six to you 12 buy now, months. you finance into a lower rate. You take advantage of that appreciation because, again, inventory is low. So chances are you're still going to get some appreciation even in this high rate environment. Right. Refinance, bring your payment down. If rates don't drop, you got the lowest rate you could at the time. That's right. So they say uh, <laughs> the outcomes are going to be very, very different this time. It's going to take us several years to get back to what feels like a normal housing market, if not longer. But it will be a big blip in the radar. Okay. Just never know. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're a seller, is it a good time to sell or, or not right now? It kind of depends. If you if you own a property that you have a very low interest rate in, it's going to be difficult, right? Because you may have, if you refinanced when rates went down, your rate is probably in the threes, could be sub three, right? Um, even if it's in the fours. Um, but it, it just depends, like, if you if you need to, you know, expand get a bigger house for your family or whatever the situation might be some some sellers are doing it they're giving up the low rates to buy in a higher rate environment to try to they just need to for the family some people are waiting so that's also keeping inventory low too when rates come down we'll get more inventory which will help everything so we really need these rates to drop hear that fed let's <laughs> go all right segment two so we're going into our second segment which is a featured property neighborhood restaurant um and we'll do a different one every week and we'll expand uh, okay. and see where it goes. So uh, you wanted to do a featured restaurant. So what restaurant do you want to feature? Yeah, I'd like to feature a restaurant today in Hercules where we live and okay. it's Powder Keg. Okay. And that's where we go a lot. Um, oh. I know it's a very popular restaurant in Hercules. Uh, it's kind of a seafood restaurant, but they kind of have everything. Like even if you don't like seafood, you can get right sandwiches or burgers appetizers different things like that i still don't know if they have a burger but they do they have that's a burger good. they have sliders too okay we usually we usually get well i like the crab melt that's always good unless you're allergic to crab don't don't do that um calamari right and what are those other things we like the golden nuggets oh yeah kara likes the golden oh, nuggets. Yeah. got great drinks they have a bar full bar full bar great service um great neighborhood restaurant what do you what do you get there when we go uh what do i get at powder i've got i, I always garrett always gets the same thing when we go to a I restaurant do that a <laughs> he he orders something he likes he knows what he's getting mm -hmm. i like to switch it up i've gotten the sliders there mm -hmm. i've gotten the mussels there okay i've gotten um i think i've gotten the burger and they have like fried oysters and they yeah. have oyster nights too, right? Um, or yeah, I think Tuesdays are there. Yeah, or Tuesdays are prime room. I don't know. They do app they do uh, like happy hour and all like they every day they have different drink, a featured drink. Anyway, great restaurant, powder keg. We go there a lot, lunch, dinner. Mm -hmm. I forget what time they open and close, but check it out. Yeah. Right by the water. Google. Yeah. 
Oh, they're open from 12 to uh, 7. Look at that. Okay, 12 to Perfect. 7. So a uh, late brunch. That's a great And place. they have a Sunday brunch. I know they have a Sunday okay. brunch. 9 a.m. on Sundays. Powder there you cake. go. Powder cake. They got TV. Like I said, we went there for a Warrior game one time, I think. Yeah. And sit at the bar. That's a good spot. All right. That was a short one. That was only about two minutes, but that's okay. Should you stage? That's always a that's always an interesting question. I remember when I started going to listen to opponents, that was always the question. It always came up. Should we stage? And you, deep down, you know the answer is, of course, you should. Duh. Yeah. Um, but then it's like, okay, well, who's going to pay for it? And from my experience, sellers don't want to pay for it, which is totally understandable because it's like, well, why am I hiring you? Why, what am I paying you commission for? I pay you commission and then I have to pay for staging? Like it's a joke. So should you stage? Yes, you should. And what you should do, what you should do, Martha, is you should, you should list with us because we include staging on our service. Right. And so it's just a no brainer. It's just included. We always do it. Um, and it makes such a tremendous difference in the, in the marketability of the house, how it looks, how people perceive it. Um, it's kind of amazing. It's kind of, it does totally change like how a house feels when you walk in. Yeah. Yeah, and you see that with buyers, right? When mm -hmm. you walk into and you're doing buyer tours and you're seeing five houses that day and, mm -hmm. you know, three of them aren't staged and two of them are staged, you know, even the buyer will comment and say, hey, wow, yeah. like the difference in the staging makes, yeah. you know, makes, yeah, uh, the, not ha having a home staged makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. Yes. And you don't really notice until you do have a staged home. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, we don't have to stage it. It's fine. Like, you can kind of get the idea. Yeah. Or two similar homes in the neighborhood yeah. and one staged and one's not. Yeah. yeah. And it just, even, especially too, like, it just, it, it takes the buyer's uh, attention off of, you know, like, no house is perfect. There's going to be little nicks on the wall. Baseboards are going to be nicked or whatever. There's going to be marks and stuff. Marks on the floors. Sometimes the staging just makes them kind of look past that. Like, yeah, there's stuff there, but once they get all their furniture in there, they can really get that feel and it's always so perfect when they really like the stage and they start taking pictures they're like oh i can get ideas about this yeah. and even sellers it's also a thing because when like when we're listing our properties if neighbors come in and they like how it looks like it, it just it just shows effort right it shows that you're trying right and that's why we include it in our service um it's not cheap it's thousands of dollars yeah like you're spending minimum on a small place probably two to 2,500 on a big place, you could be spending over $3,000, like, like just simply easily over 3,000. So, um, I think we think it's important. That's why we committed to it. Not only do we pay for the staging, we also pay for the inspections, home and a pest inspection too. So we try to just, it's a service, full service. You're going to list it. You're going to list with us. You're going to pay a commission and we're going to basically provide everything we need to provide to get this house. sold. Yeah. Staging. What else we got? So it's October uh -oh. next segment. Are we going to, I guess, yeah, we'll do that segment. Yeah, it's October. Um, October. Isn't Halloween your favorite holiday? Uh, you know, it's, well, it's what good. What do you mean, no? I like them all. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. This, you this, have to pick these last three months are the best months. They all kind of commingle anyway. Commingle. Mm -hmm. You know, all, they all kind of blur together at the mm -hmm. end of it. Yeah. So Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, which one? Would, I mean, which, out of those three, though. Which one's my favorite? Um, like I think candy, Thanksgiving. Like turkey, I like, think I like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is nice because it's right in the middle, right? You just came off Halloween, so you're still riding that. And then it's like, oh, Thanksgiving, we still have Christmas. Yep. Thanksgiving, it's the, oh, the food. Mm. October, so um, the Cool Patch Pumpkins. The place is so great. Dixon. Dixon. Dixon so you got to go, you got to go north a little bit, but uh it's that time of year again. Cool Patch Pumpkins is hosting their uh, corn maze. Home of the world record corn maze. That's right. That. Um, so they're open until October 31st. Uh, they are warning you it's going to rain the last two weekends. So plan accordingly and visit early. They have a mini, mini, they have a, first of all, they have the world record corn maze. It's, it's huge. Martha and I go every year. You get a big map and it'll take you like, it'll take you like an hour at least to get through it. Mm -hmm. Unless you cheat, which <laughs> you shouldn't. And if you get through it faster than that, you're, you're a cheater. It's just, it's just the truth. Um, looks like they have a mini hay maze for kids. The hay ride is $5 a person. They have a corn bath. Sounds like a good way to 
get some germs, five dollars a person. Um, but then the corn maze is, I think I saw $22 a person for that. Yeah, that's what it was. I don't was. know. Is that for kids too? Probably. Uh, I think it's, yeah, Anywhere. $22 a person. Five and under are free. Okay. So yeah, weekends, I think they do like food, drinks, um, fun time. Uh, Been around since 2001 and so, they are in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah, and we're going to go and we're going to time ourselves. So if you go, time yourself. And Let us know yeah, if you beat us. So you can beat it. And Might get year, something. Every year they have a different theme. Um, like I know like the COVID year, it was like thinking first responders, I think, medical. Yes, all that's that right. Kind of yeah, every year they have um, a theme. That's they've done right. other themes. We probably, I think we have our maps that we've saved so we can go back and look. Um, they have some pictures on their website too, coolpatchpumpkins.com. They have pictures of the of it of the maze it's cool check it out dixon or not but yeah cool. <laughs> um I don't, you do not have to make reservations um i think you just show up yep you just show up and you were saying there's something else in hercules what's hercules doing yeah so hercules has the uh has their trunk or treat on trunk or treat trunk or treat i like that yes it is uh, october 27th at the community center parking lot um starts at 6 p.m and it's alternative to traditional halloween trick-or-treating activities come by in your costume to receive special treats there'll be prizes for the most creative trunk <laughs> halloween themed movie will play during the event to register for the best decorated trunk contact the parks and recs department most decorated trunk free fun and safe <laughs> go on by and then they like are that? also hosting they are also hosting a pumpkin carving contest at the mm. community center. So you win big money. Well, it's held throughout October. You complete the entry form with the City Hercules Parks and Recs website, and all entries are to be brought to the trunk a treat event at the community center mm. on the twenty seventh. Mm. To uh, mm. you got to pre register. No electricity. No open flames. <laughs> No big, electricity. Big money. What do you mean no electricity? What's well, what it says? No electricity. Battery operated lights are allowed. So you can't like plug into something. Okay. To make it. Oh, for your pumpkin. For your I pumpkin. See. It's free. <laughs> so. No electricity. What are we talking about? All right. That's it. Hercules cool. community events. I like that. That's Let great. And the Bay Area has a bunch of different like pumpkin patches and corn mazes and everything. But I know, I think... Um, the patch that website or that magazine or whatever they sent out a whole thing so people can go to the patch and check out different things around the bay area to go check out if you have kids and you need to have them go do something <laughs> that's it that was right. time did you hear about taylor swift and how they got her out of the uh oh. the stadium no how did they the do first it? game yes uh, well apparently we don't know if this oh well is that true. time yeah um so apparently they're in the suite they're in the suite at the football game. And if you've ever been in a baseball stadium or football stadium, there's usually one way in, one way out. Unless you're rich, they might have different air, different things, trap doors or whatnot. But apparently, all the Swifties were waiting outside the suite of uh, the first game she was at. Not the, not the Jets game, but the first game. And they never saw her come out. So they were like, well, what, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Apparently, she got out in a big popcorn machine and they wheeled her out. And she was hiding in that. And... I think that's how she gets around. I think just she's on, known for that. Boxes. Boxes. and But what happens if they, they, they catch on to it and then you have these two people pushing this popcorn machine and what happens if they're secret service they agents. hijack it? They're secret service agents. The people pushing it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're disguised. Come on. They thought about it already. <sighs> well, How'd she think? get out of the second game is the real question. You know, I haven't I haven't looked into that. That's yeah. a good question. Travis Kelsey gained a million followers. His jersey when jersey sales went up four hundred percent. They say Taylor Swift is the kindest person. Oh, I read today that she um like when she did her era's tour at the chase center not only did she give like all the truck drivers like a big fat bonus uh -huh. like upwards i think like upwards of fifty thousand yeah, dollars a million it was a million someone said millions i think that was wrong that. anyway 
she not only does that, but she goes around and like fills all the like homeless, like uh, what do you call them? Like they're eating, like the places where they eat. Damn her! The She's shelters, just so like perfect. she donates so much money that they said like she donated to the shelter in the city oh. or the place for homeless people. They wow. like. Have great. enough money to like feed people. Well, she for changes us. the economies. Yes. Well, you saw her. I mean, she was at the game and she was cleaning up the suite. Was she? I mean, we would go to games. We wouldn't even clean up the suite. I didn't know she was cleaning up the suite. Well, you know, anyway. Just throwing things away. Enough about you. Nothing of it. Yeah, nothing about it. Anyway, that was episode one. I got one more thing to say. You know, one thing that's really kind of funny with Instagram and Facebook and social media, we post these serious videos and really information about how tips for buyers tips for sellers <laughs> mm -hmm. really just trying to really help people out there you know educate the market educate, you know resources <laughs> information really just trying to be there for people and no one really likes those videos few few views few hundred views here you post a little money game a real rhyming game video gets over fourteen thousand views i mean i don't understand this so people please help me out here what, what do you want to see the algorithm okay? what do you want to see Help us out. All right. That's the end of the podcast for day uh, time for the first time. First so, one. Uh, okay. We'll try to do better next time. How about that? Thanks. <laughs> Peace.